Welcome back to What Are You Noobs with General Disturbance and today we have Laurent D in the Object 261, the Tier 10 Soviet Artillery. We're on the North Spawn of Mines. And the battle gets underway. Now, as many of you know, the Object 261 has a 180mm B1 cannon. And it looks like Laurent D is indicating he's targeting the area just on the rise, but now he's moved to the enemy cap area where the RT is likely to be. And we're having a quick look. Turning off the V key so we can get a clearer view of any tracer. If the enemy's going to fire, we're likely to see it very soon after the start of the battle. No sign of any tracer. Nope, no sign. Ah, we can see one of the enemy artillery. A GW100 has been seen. Okay, he's going into an RT safe position. And we saw the tracer for one of the other RT as well. Right, so we know where two of them are. One of them is directly behind that building. Rounds out. And it kills the GWE 100. First shot. Excellent. always useful to counter-battery the enemy artillery. Now it's more than likely the enemy artillery has moved back um, and he's actually a little further back. It's a T-92 that he's looking for. He's probably moved further back from where he was because he probably saw the GWE-100 deck go down and doesn't want to remain in that area. He wouldn't have moved forward because he knows that T-54 Lightweight is looking over the edge of the cliff. So he'll want to hide at the back. Okay, he's decided to switch the aim, but the AMX-40 has been killed. So now he's just had a quick look to see if the bat track can be seen. It can't, so he's now switching his attention back. No, he can see the Emil too. Okay, he's indicating that area. Rounds out. And a direct hit for 438 hit points and a massive stun. Now that Emil 2 was spotted by his uh, team, his, uh, the rest of his team, on the sitting on top of the hill in the donut. Okay, an MX-13 has turned up. That's just it. Okay, oh, that was a hit by the T-92, so... The T-92 obviously spotted where he was, managed to get a hit in. Unfortunately, he suffered 230 damage from the T-92. Okay, he can't see where the T-92 is, but I would presume T-92 is in K-8. And he gets a direct hit on the Type 4 Heavy, and he's moving position now to ensure that the T-92 can't hit him again with the counter battery. Always wise at this stage with guns that have got such a long reload time to reposition yourself after every shot just to make sure. Okay, almost reloaded. Now the Mule 2 is in defilade at the moment in the cliff. He can't be hit. The Object 140 can't be hit. E-75 can't be hit, so he's going to have to move back. No, he can't get the E-75 at the moment. And he can't get the T-95. Ah, yes, he can hit the T-95. He's lining up the shot, letting the aim dial in. Rounds out. Ah, it bounces. He does two critical hits, but it actually does nothing more than that. You hear the twang as it hit the... Uh, the T95. Okay, the object 40 can be 140 can be seen, but unfortunately he's hiding behind the rock. He's almost reloaded. 
think he might rely on the splash damage here and let the T-54 lightweight do the rest. So long as the object 140 stays there, he's not going to be a concern. Okay, that Emil's moved up. He's taking shots at the E-50. Now he can hit this Emil. Set. It's moved into cover again. It's unfortunate. Okay, you can see the Type 4. But unfortunately he can't hit it because it's too close to the rock. Now, can he hit this T-92 which must be sitting at the back? No. Is he going to chance the shot? Ah! We saw the tracer there. The tracer showed that he's in that square. That's I think that's slightly to one side of the T-92. But that would have damaged the T-92. Okay, he's got 12 rounds left. It's standard for premium. Okay, that object 140 is having a go. There's a problem, is that the object 140 might actually be able to know exactly where his uh, object 261 is and transmit that back to the T92. It's gone out of sight. The Conqueror is moving up. T-54 lightweight didn't last very long, I'm afraid. It's, uh, he's gone down. Okay, the Object 140 has suffered a hit. Probably from the Waffentrager. Okay. Laurent D is moving back, trying to get a better line on that Object 140. Still no way of getting him unless he's going to splash him. Rounds out and it hits the wreck of the T-54 lightweight. That's unfortunate. Gets interrupted. It's the shallow trajectory of the uh, 261. Bit of a problem. Looks like it's the Conqueror's stunned as well. Okay, the Object 140 has moved away. This should make it easier for him to get a hit but he has been spotted so the T-92 will be on him very shortly rounds out it stuns and hits the uh, object 140 he's moving repositioning ok he's repositioning quite drastically that's probably his best uh, advantage at this stage yes he's going to sit behind that rock using the rock as cover he's still got an angle on that Emil if he can move out a bit more that's it No, unfortunately, the shallow, the shallow angle on that, those hills on that, um, um, rocks on the top of the hill. And it's a direct hit on the Type 4 Heavy and he's gone down 302 hit points. Okay, he's reloading. Now the 212 is indicating the T95. Or where he thinks the T95 is. Now I'm sure that that T92 is still in that corner because he's frightened of being spotted by the tanks on the donut. And he doesn't need to go after the Emil 2 because the Emil 2 has been taken out by the 212 instead. Okay, the Object 140 has turned up again, but he's actually hiding behind the uh, the rocks at the end of that south island near the lighthouse. The middle island near the lighthouse, I should say. Which is a... a fairly good position actually because he can't really be easily hit because the rocks do give him some form of cover but that bat chat is not in cover at all and very 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 vulnerable from that position rounds out both uh, both the t212 and the 261 fired at the same spot but he pulled away just before the shells landed okay he's moved up to that um rock at the corner and he's backing onto the corner so as not to expose too much of his uh, tank he can see the t-54 is coming up up they decided to go up onto the top which is actually a better decision now he might be able to splash them yeah he might be able to splash them from here rounds out and it kills the uh, bat chat t25t okay 
Now let's see if he can do any damage to the Type 61. Unfortunately, the T92 has also stunned the Type 54. T54's damaged, he's been stunned. And the Type 61 kills him. Okay, the RT-95 is coming down to the Type 61. We have got a one tank advantage. The Waffentrager is up on the cliff, so he's going to get good visibility. Okay, Type 61 has been seen. He can get a shot in here. Rounds out. Oh, unfortunately, the Type 61 has been killed, but he was uh, a waste. the shell was wasted. He's reloading. He's got five shells left. Now that T-92 has to be in the corner. The enemy's only got three tanks left. Two tank destroyers and Type 92. One of those tank destroyers is the T-95. Okay, there's the Waffentrager. He's moving to intercept now. Lauren D can hit him. Rounds out. And it's a hit. 279, but it looks like it was a splash. But that should be enough for the T-95 to take advantage. He has been hit as well. And he kills the Waffentrager. So he's gone down. It, the T-92 was hiding in that corner. He has been spotted. Laurent D's almost reloaded. The T-92 is going very defensive. He's using the wreck of the GWE-100 as cover. If he sits in that corner, he will be hit. He has been hit. Laurent D's managed to get hit in for 308. Now that weapon trigger should move down now. Obviously, I think he's keeping that T-95 pinned in position, but his gun will be needed. Now Laurent D in the meanwhile is repositioning. He's getting closer, finding a new angle to fire from. Okay. Always useful to find a new angle. It also means that the enemy doesn't know where you are. Okay, it looks like he's actually going to the far east of the map. And he's going to fire down into a position where the T-95 will be exposed. If he can make it through the village in time. Okay, the T-95 has been seen. I'm not sure he can get a good angle from there. He can, he can, he can hit the T-95. Okay, letting the aim settle. Rounds out, and he splash kills the T-95. That just leaves the T-92 left. And of course he can come directly in now because the T-92 is not gonna be able to do much to uh, come out and fight all of the remaining members of uh, Lawrence's team. He's got two rounds left. Both of them are premium. Okay, the T-92 is bound to be in there. We know he's in defensive position in that corner. That does make a bit of a problem. Now, the premium rounds do have a good splash. So that probably did do some damage to the T-92. But he's only got one round left now. Ah, we know where the T-92 is. He's in the corner. Okay, he's hiding. Now he's probably, that T-92 is probably reloaded. But Laurent D is going to be reloaded very shortly. He's got low health, the T-92. Splash should be able to do it. And he splash kills the T-92. And that's the end of the game. Okay, let's have a look at the end of game stats. And that was a second class tanker. A bruiser. A fighter for scoring more than four kills. A Faden's medal for killing the last enemy with the last shell in his infantry. And a counter battery for killing both of the enemy RT. He did, 2000, he did uh, 2,370 damage. He did 5 kills. And he did 848 base XP. He fired 18 shots, all 18 shots in his infantry. Seven direct hits, six penetrations, nine splash, damage of 2,370, one hit received as a result of splash, which was from the T-92. He damaged eight vehicles, destroyed five. Damage to vehicles stunned by him was 567, 11 stuns. He has a premium count and he earned 40,364 credits. 
After deductions, he has a deficit of 3,045 credits. He received 1,272 XP times two first victory of the day, and he takes home 2,544 XP. So that's uh, well done for Laurent D. If you enjoyed this battle, please give it a like and do subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.